What's going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to generate our own pseudo random numbers from scratch. So let us get right into it. All right, so I recently made a video on how to generate truly random numbers by using the random.org API, which bases its number generation in a natural source of randomness, namely atmospheric noise. And there I mentioned that the core Python module random actually uses a pseudo random number generator. So it generates seemingly random numbers, which are deterministically generated by an algorithm by a mathematical formula which means, of course, when you provide the same seat, the same initial starting conditions, you will always get the same sequence of random numbers. And what we want to do today is we want to build such a random number generator, a pseudo random number generator from scratch in Python. Now, we're not going to build the one that Python actually uses behind the scenes. We're going to build a very simple one called uh, linear congruential generator, LCG. And we're going to talk about this in a second. But for those of you who don't know that this is the case, if you import random in Python and you say print random dot rand int and you generate a number between zero and 100. Now I copied the wrong thing. And if you run this a couple of times, you're going to get different numbers here, random numbers, seemingly random numbers. However, this is just because the starting conditions are always slightly different. If I say that the seat shall be 100, for example, I will always get the same random numbers. So they're still seemingly random as in there is no pattern in them when you look at them, but they are deterministically generated. This is not true randomness, if something like true randomness can even exist. But if you accept that there could be something like true randomness, this is definitely not it because this is just a formula, an algorithm generating random numbers. And this is exactly what we're going to build in this video today so that you can get an understanding of how random numbers or seemingly random numbers, quote unquote, pseudo random numbers are generated in Python or in any programming language. So we're going to start here by creating a class, which we're going to call LCG pseudo generator or pseudo random generator like this. And what we want to pass to this algorithm in the constructor is we want to pass the parameters a C, M, and a seat. And by default, the seat is going to be none. I'm going to explain here in a second why. And the formula for this LCG, for this, I always have to look it up, linear congruential generator, is you take what you already have and you basically just do a simple multiplication with a simple addition and then you do modulo M. So what you do to generate a number and maybe it makes more sense to use the Wikipedia page here. It's essentially just this simple formula here. And don't be confused if you don't understand the formula, I'm going to explain it here, it's quite simple. Uh, you have some starting digit or some previous digit or not digit number actually, x n, x sub n, you multiply this with the parameter a that we're adding to the constructor here. So this is going to be always the same number, you add to it some other parameters c, which is also a parameter that we have, and you take the result modulo m. And this gives you the next number in the sequence. So that's the basic idea here. And what kind of values you use now for a c and m is up to you. Well, now when you scroll down in the Wikipedia page, you're going to see here that this random number generator is used in a couple of places with different parameters. So for example, Microsoft's Visual Basic version six and earlier have used this algorithm with these parameters. So for m two to the power of 24, for a this number here and for c for the increment, this number here, uh, then you have C plus plus m, or what is it? m inst d rand is using these parameters. So we're just going to pick one of them. Let's let's actually go with those here. And we're going to see what this means now in our random number generation. So we're going to say a or not a m is going to have a default value of two to the power of 31 minus one. Like this, c by default is going to be zero and a is going to be four eight two seven one. So 48,271. And again, you can change these values. This is just the 
C++11 random function here. So this function is using these parameters. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to just say self dot a equals a self dot c equals c self dot m equals m and self dot x zero is going to be equal to a seed, but only if we have a seed passed to the program. Now, we're going to just pass one um, for the first couple of tries, but then we're going to add something to this algorithm to this class, which is going to also generate a somewhat random starting condition based on certain parameters we're going to talk about here in a second. For now, we're just going to assume that the user is going to pass a seat. So we're just going to say x zero is equal to seed. And then what we want to do is we want to say self dot x previous is going to be equal. And now we're going to just apply the formula one time as a first uh, so that we have a first generated x sub n. Remember the formula here. This is where is it? x n plus one equals a times x n plus c mod m. Now we have a c and m and x n we're going to start with x zero, which is the seed itself. So we're going to say that our formula now is um, a or actually self dot a times self dot x zero plus self dot c modulo self dot m that is how we generate our first x. And this is now x one, the next one is going to be x two and so on. And what we want to do now is we just want to generate a number. So we're going to say generate a number. And we're going to say that the number is again, just this year, the only difference this time, instead of using x zero, we're going to use the previous x as the input. So we're going to take whatever we get here in the first step, and we're going to just repeat the whole thing uh, to get the next number, but we're not going to save it here directly into x previous, we're going to save it into number. And then we're going to say, we're actually, we can actually save it directly into x previous. And then we're going to just say return x previous uh, self dot x previous. So this is very basic now, but this should work. So if I go ahead and I say LCG equals LCG pseudo random generator, we're going to pass for the seed 10, for example, then we're going to say LCG dot generate number, and we're going to do it a couple of times, you can see we get some seemingly random numbers here. And we get always the same numbers because we have a seed equal to 10. Now, what can we do here other than just doing that? Now, first of all, we can take this now and say that I want to have a number in a certain range. So I can say, for example, that here, I want to have num range as a parameter. By default, this is going to be none. And what this basically means is that I want to take these numbers here. And I want to say instead of getting these numbers, I want to get numbers between zero and 100, for example. Now, to do this, it's quite simple, I just take the generated result. And I say if self dot x previous, or actually not, this is not the condition, if num range is none, then we just return uh, the generated number. Otherwise, we're going to try to fit that into a certain range. And we do that by saying the integer version. So we typecast whatever we're going to calculate here. And what we're calculating is we take the number divided by self dot m, which is our modulo number here that we're taking all of this modulo self dot m, we take the number in this case, the number is self dot x previous, we divide it by self dot m minus one actually. And we multiply that with our number range difference. So num range one minus num range zero and num range is just, is just going to be a tuple or a list with two values from two. So two minus from and then we just add to this whole thing num range zero again. So from again, that is now our uh, adjustment here. And what I can do now is I can just say num range equals 
or actually I can just pass a list here from zero to 200. And if I run this here, uh, I think I messed up something. Let me just check here. Divide times. Oh, I think. Yeah, of course, this needs to be in brackets. Let's run this again. There you go. So now we get random numbers between zero and 200. And of course, I can do the same thing with zero and two. So I will always get numbers between. Now, of course, I need to generate this. Let me just remove all of this here. If I only generate numbers between zero and two, I will always get either zero or one because this is the max. It's not um, it's not taken into consideration. So zero up until two will only give us zero and one. If I want to have twos as well, I would have to change this to three here. And you can see I produce a couple of twos as well. So this is how we fit the result into a certain range. Now, how can I make this more random by not having to provide a seed by just having a different randomness every time. Now, this is something that usually in Python, you don't have to care about. But if you're a C programmer, you have to care about this all the time. Because in C, uh, I think even I have a video on this channel about this, if you want to generate random numbers in C, you have to provide a source of randomness first. Now, the algorithm is there, the pseudo random number generator is there. But you have to provide a seed. And the seed itself has to be somewhat random, somewhat chaotic. And what you can do to just get a starting position that's not fixed by the user is you can take certain things out of your computer that will give you some source of randomness. So for example, uh, what we can do is we can say import OS and import time. And we can then just set as the seed here, we can say, um, if seed is none, then we're going to say self dot x zero is going to be uh, and here we can now combine our process ID with the current timestamp. So I can say integer os dot get process ID plus time dot time. And the reason you want to do both of this, and maybe you want to do it in a different way, maybe process ID times something times 300 or something, I don't know, something that makes sense, you can come up with a formula here. But the reason you want to include two different factors is because if you have two processes that use a random number generator, maybe you have two instances of a script that you're running, if they just base their randomness on the time, they're always going to have the same randomness. And if you just have a process ID, you will rarely have a different randomness if you run it on a, on, on a similar system. So if you have the same process ID or a very similar process ID, this will probably not give you a good random result. So if you combine the two in a way, and maybe you should do more than just adding them together. But if you use some random stuff, or seemingly random stuff like a process ID and the current timestamp, you will get a seat that is not manually selected. So you will get different numbers every time. Uh, unless of course, you run this uh, very quickly one. So if I, if I run this script, and I wait for half a second, and I run it again, maybe this will not be enough for new randomness, because maybe the time is still the same. So otherwise, we're just going to say that the seat is provided. So we're going to set x zero to the seat. So now if I run this, I'm still going to get the same random numbers. So if I say print LCG, generate number between zero and 100. I will get the same random numbers being generated every time. But if I remove the seed here, now I'm going to get different random numbers every time, as you can see. So yeah, this is now pseudo random number generation. And this is a weak generator. So this is a weak algorithm. Uh, nowadays, not really used anymore, especially if you use it for or especially if you need randomness for cryptography, don't use this, this is not a good idea. This is maybe good enough to just play around with it. This is maybe good enough to just uh, implement a number guessing game so that you have some randomness. But this is not what you want to be using if you need some reliable randomness. But I think it's a good example, because it's quite simple, you have this basic formula where you have a multiplier, you have a starting number, and you have uh, an increment, and then you also have a modulo number here. Um, I think this is a very simple number generation. And you can try this also with different configurations from the uh, from the Wikipedia page here. This is just one configuration you can use 
some other configurations here as well. And you get as a result some seemingly random numbers and you can work with this. So yeah, this is how you implement a pseudo random number generator from scratch in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.